To me, I think science and art just naturally intersect. They wouldn't be able to survive without each other. The natural world is art itself. All the colors and the patterns and the relationships are just remarkable. My name is Taylor Mujacomo and I'm a science illustrator and a graphic editor at National Geographic. I've always been into both art and science. I was always drawing. My mom would just hand me a stack of papers and crayons and I would be drawing animals. And I really loved the art classes that I was in in middle school and, and high school. And I knew that I had a talent for this, but I always just thought of it as a hobby. When I got to college, I started off as pre-med. I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, I knew I had a steady hand, so maybe even a surgeon. Uh, <laughs> freshman year, I quickly realized that was not something that was going to work. Art was always there for me. It always served as a stress relief and was there when I just wanted to take a moment for myself, work with my hands and get to just put it out all on paper or whatever medium I was working with. I realized science illustration was a profession that I would be really good at, and so I just dove head first and haven't looked back. I was lucky enough to get an internship at the Natural Science Museum in Pittsburgh, and I worked really closely with the staff illustrator there, and he showed me the ropes and showed me his favorite mediums and how to work with experts and scientists. I was able to create this original reconstruction of this titanosaur. I put in over 100 hours, and I didn't really know anything about dinosaurs, so I got to dive headfirst into what a titanosaur is, how best to show the proportions, how to show the size and the scale of how just large this animal was. Completing the titanosaur reconstruction really showed me that I could do this and that I really liked doing this. I really liked delving into the research and learning everything I could about the subject and then being able to put that on paper was really fun. After college, I decided to do a graduate program specifically for science illustration. It was actually where I learned digital techniques, where I learned Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and how all of those interact with each other. Those two experiences really helped me develop a diverse portfolio, which honestly helped me to get here. When I'm working here at National Geographic, I tend to stick with the digital mediums as it's really easy to work and fix and change and control Z as uh, the editorial process goes on, especially when we are involving experts and to be as accurate as possible. Do oh, you have dates for all of these? I can ask if they have dates. It doesn't look like they list them on this specific graphic. So right now I'm working on a project about gray whales and how at the moment they are going through an unusual mortality event, which meaning more and more of them are being stranded on beaches and scientists are still debating on why that is happening. So my job is to show the patterns of these strandings and their declining population, as well as showing some of the reasons why this might be happening. The gray whale story will be an online story where it will be broken up into a couple small graphics that are just embedded within it. The first graphic will be more or less a line chart showing the population and stranding data and how that looks over time and show the sheer difference of normal years of strandings versus now. The second graphic I'll plan on showing more or so a scene of how these gray whales feed naturally on just a normal year and what could be changing these patterns and what is the difference on these last couple of years on why they're becoming malnourished and what may be causing them to become stranded. When I'm making graphic stories, I want to keep in mind that people will only care about it if they fully understand it and connect with it. 
Honestly, not everyone is an auditory learner. We need visuals and not everything can be just written down in a textbook. It needs to be shown. The process needs to be outlined explicitly. Visuals will help make things less abstract. They will make it easier to parse really complex ideas and make it easier to understand from any audience, really, whether that be young or old. I hope my visuals invoke a sense of curiosity and interest in the world and science, so people become more engaged with science and the world around them. I recommend anyone and everyone who's interested in graphic art or infographics or just art in general is to practice, practice, practice. You want to hone in your skills, but you also want to play and experiment. Find out what clicks with you, uh, find what you're interested in, and just keep going down that rabbit hole. But also making sure that you're stepping outside of your comfort zone and learning new things.